Today, I'm gonna show you how to dive a submarine and resurface it. And while doing that underwater, I'm gonna give you a tour of the submarine and show you a lot more details than we usually do. And this is kind of a thank you video for all of you. We just hit 100,000 subscribers. We blew past it actually. I think we're like 120 something thousand now. And I can't thank you guys enough. I try to get to as many comments as I can. So leave a comment, like the video. I spent four years building this submarine and you see we got some American flag hatches on the submarine and the reason for that is uh, for all you that are subscribed and have been following us is North Korea. Uh, you guys voted to name the submarine Lake Defender in response to that story. That woman called the police on us and thought we were being attacked by North Korea. No joke. The whole sub was gray so it looked like a battleship and now we got some nice American flags on top. A lot of you guys have thrown in the comments what the barrels are for. The barrels are identifiers. So while I'm underwater, boats won't run me over. So they're marker barrels. There's one in the front, there's one in the back, just to mark the front and the back of the sub. I want you guys to know that when we're doing these videos on YouTube, safety is our number one priority and we have a plan for everything. So to get ready to dive the submarine, you first, you gotta get in it. Hatch opens real easy, it's on hydraulics. I'm gonna step on down in. When you're standing, this is pretty much how you sit. We're gonna go into first person here. All right, guys, here we are standing inside the submarine. And here's the hatch. These are the O-rings. It's just a rubber seal. This is like traditional on pretty much most submarines are gonna be a single O-ring like this. And um, yeah, so what we're going to do before we get ready to dive is turn the CO2 scrubber on, get that air flowing in here. You turn that, click on this switch. The nice thing about this little panel right here, it's a little design thing that I implemented. Uh, it's kind of based off the Boeing 737 panels for you aviation geeks out here. You can see a little bit of that inspiration. We're going to flick on the CO2 scrubber. Here's your CO2 meter. That's going to do a 30 second countdown. It's detecting getting calibrated. All right, so I just turned around here to show you a little bit more around the submarine and just explain what things are to you guys. So this little guy is the CO2 scrubber. It's the most basic thing on the planet. It's really not a complicated thing to build. Um, that's why it doesn't look special and it's just plastic. But this one was perfect for one person. I have a bigger, better, improved version called a radial CO2 scrubber, which is going to be installed in the next video, which is perfect for two people. That's why you see the soda lime powder on the floor. That is because we had two people in here and this scrubber was not keeping up with two people. So this is pretty much what people would do in submarines back in the old days before they just had scrubber systems. They would just dump this stuff on the floor. Um, especially while waiting for rescue, if the submarine like sank to the bottom and they were trapped in a room, they'd take that and throw it on the floor. So I was like, you know what? That works well. Just throw it on the floor, hop on in. <laughs> so right here is our oxygen tank. We're gonna open that up. Now this oxygen tank is a smaller one just for, you know, when we do a couple hour dives. I got a bigger one that we're putting in here because I'm gonna be doing an eight hour underwater challenge trapped inside. I'll probably be sleeping in here. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get this flowing. Here's our milliliters per minute. The human body absorbs a few hundred milliliters a minute depending on your breathing rate. So I like to start right around four or 500. And I'll just calibrate this on the dive according to this gauge which is the cabin pressure, which I'll set on zero before I seal the hatch. So if pressure drops inside the hull here, uh, this gauge will go negative. If it's high, it'll go positive. And then that's how I can keep that pressure neutral. And uh, that just helps to avoid uh, any ear pressure issues, especially when you're opening that hatch. I've had that off by just a little bit when you open that hatch. It hits your ears like in an airplane. When I keep that on zero, we don't have any problems. Our CO2 meter here is reading 964, that's good. And uh, 
Everything's running, oxygen is flowing, so I'm going to seal up the hatch. All right, got the hatch closed. Now, to seal the hatch, I use these J hooks. Now, this is not my design as far as sealing the hatch. I've seen this design used on the Ketridge K350, K250 submersibles, which is another private submarine. And uh, I'm using this design for sealing the hatches because it's effective and it works and it's quick to take the hooks off. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through here, see that little gap of light? I'm gonna keep turning this until that gap of light goes away. We're gonna repeat that process and seal up the rest of the hatch clamps. You can see looking all around, there are no light gaps. Our CO2 rate is 4300. That likes to hover around 5500, which is fine. So you can hear the beep right there. The OSHA work limit, for those that don't know, is eight hours at 5000 ppm. Are you guys ready? to dive the submarine. So we're just gonna make sure everything looks good. We got our overhead fan on, we got our CO2 scrubber on, cabin pressure is neutral. Power good, 11 and a half volts. The battery is a little low, but we're not driving today. We're just submerging. So I'm gonna get ready to flood the sub and to do that, I'm gonna start with the front tank. I'm going to radio our surface boat right here. Hey Nick, I'm going to begin submerging it uh, and you can start your timer once the hatches hit the water. Sounds good, 10-4. I'm going to flood the front tank, so to do that I'm going to open up the bottom of the front ballast tank. This one's manual, the other ones are electronic. I did this on purpose just so I got one tank that's not running electronic. Front top, that's going to start to vent air, as you can see some of the water coming out of the top there. There you go. You can see the deck starting to go under the water because the front ballast tank is filling up. Now that we got that front deck under the water, we'll submerge the rest of it. That's real simple. Just push these buttons. Now the entire sub is sinking. You can see the water coming up. This is always so much fun. I'm gonna turn on our uh, periscope. There's our periscope. You can see air coming out from there and there. That is from the main ballast tanks. All those bubbles coming out. So we got our CO2 down a little bit. Now, once it gets to the top of the hatches here, I'm going to turn these off. And then we're just going to fine tune it for neutral buoyancy. See, Nick is on our support boat today. We're going to turn on the white interior lights. And uh, all these valves right here, for you guys wondering, these are all the manual valves. So uh, what I can do here is for the, I can open up the aft bottom tank and the aft top. You see we got a little bit more air coming out of the aft tank now. Our aft tower is under. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? So here we are. We are underwater at periscope depth. So I'm going to answer a couple questions for you guys. While we're underwater, some of the top questions that I get. Number one, why haven't we been driving it underwater that much? You can see a little bit of that in the video that I dive with my girlfriend where I do a little bit of underwater cruising. But the batteries in this are aging out and we're upgrading them to lithium ion next season which as you can imagine is very expensive because lithium ion batteries are like $500 a piece um, and uh, yeah we'll be able to do much more underwater cruising because I can only go like one mile an hour right now it used to go like three miles an hour but since the batteries are dying out I can only go one mile an hour underwater 
which is really boring. How does the submarine come back to the surface? You see that red tank right there? That is compressed CO2. So when CO2 is uh, compressed, it turns into a liquid. And the nice thing about that is this gives us several times the air volume out of this little tank than it would if we were to use nitrogen or oxygen or anything else. If you saw my last video with my girlfriend Nicole, you'll have seen that false alarm at the end where I thought there was a CO2 leak. That's the worst case scenario with having this canister in here. Not that worried about it because there's a valve directly on the tank itself. So if one of these hoses were to burst or something, I can just reach right down in here and turn that tank right off and repair it to come back up. And like I said, last time it was a false alarm, but we have a plan for everything, so I'm not that worried about it. This is the control panel for you guys that don't know. It's joystick operated that controls the dive planes. You can see right here, I'll move the dive planes up, move the dive planes down. So when we are driving, that is how I would control the depth and um, drive forward and uh, turn. So no Logitech controller, no Ocean Gate jokes. I'll be doing another video addressing Ocean Gate and why I think carbon fiber is a terrible material to design a submarine out of. I touched a little bit on these valves. So these are all the manual valves. And then these are the electronic valves. These I like to use just because it's nice and simple. But then I have these right here, which is just a manual override. A lot of you also ask, What's the point of red lights? Well, when you do dive deeper underwater, the deeper you go, the darker it gets. This red light allows me to look out the viewports much easier and I can see better because it's better for night vision. That's why you look in the old movies on battleships and submarines in the control room, the rooms are red. Also, I chose red because it's badass. Modern military submarines phased out the red lights to my knowledge, but uh, they used them for so long and I just think it looks so cool, so that's why I went with the red. So now you know what the red lights are for. We're towards the surface and I'm just going to use white because it makes it easier for you guys to see everything that's going on. I went over the cabin pressure a little bit. That continues to stay neutral. We're hovering at 4,500 parts per million. Our oxygen is flowing at 500 milliliters a minute. And uh, yeah, that's everything. You can see we're still at periscope depth. I'll show you guys the flood valves. So here's a flood valve right here. This is an extra canister of soda lime. That extra canister of soda lime will buy me a few more hours of life underwater if I got stuck down here. And then there is a second flood valve in the back as well. And uh, basically, if I got stranded underwater for any reason, and I couldn't resurface, which is very unlikely. There's a lot of redundancy built into the submarine. So, in the very rare chance that that were to happen, I could flood the submarine, equalize the pressure, open the hatch, and swim to the surface. And I'll get a lot more in depth on that in a future video. In fact, I might intentionally flood it underwater on purpose with a rescue dive team present, of course and escape from underwater in the submarine just to show you guys how it works. I feel like that video would get millions of views, so it would have to. Speaking of videos, guys, you have no idea. I love all of you and thank you so much for all of you subscribing and your comments and I try to get to all of them, but guys, we got some crazy video ideas coming. I'm thinking submarine versus thunderstorm. Um, we got a few really good videos in mind. Now we have to try to get to a million, and uh, that means we got to do crazier things and things that are going to just be really intense um, as far as like danger goes. And like I say that it's da like danger, but we're doing it in the safest way possible with professionals. So with that kept in mind, we're doing some really crazy stuff. We're still underwater, by the way. <laughs> uh, and uh, so now I'm going to show you guys how to surface the submarine, which is just as simple as sinking it, really. Instead of pushing these buttons, I'm just going to add air to the main tanks. So to do that, we're going to add air to the left side and the right side of the main tanks. So I'll open that one, 
and that one. That right there is going to push water out of the tanks and replace that with air, which is, increases the buoyancy of the submarine and takes the hatches out above the water. And as that air keeps pushing the water out, the sub's going to continue to rise out of the water. And you can see Nick there. That's a pretty cool shot. And that's how it works, guys. Boom, just like that. Now we're back to the surface. I want to interact with you more. We want to do crazier things on the channel. Tell us what you'd like to see. Tell us what you'd like to learn. There's a lot that we can teach you about submarines. I'm excited to see our journey here go from 100,000 to a million subscribers. We're going to do it, guys. I can't wait. And I hope I see you on the other side. We'll talk to you later. Have a good one, guys.